Hey everybody, I've got a really special video for you today because this looks like a standard Chevrolet Silverado. This is not a standard Chevrolet Silverado. This is the Silverado ZR2, which in itself is pretty special. But this truck is the ZR2 Bison. So it's got a lot of off-road goodies that elevate it above a standard Silverado ZR2. So let's kind of dive into it and talk about what the Silverado ZR2 Bison is. Now, of course, it starts life out as a standard Silverado. So you got the crew cab, you've got the standard box back here, four wheel drive. The ZR2 means that it's not only four wheel drive, but a four wheel drive off-road truck with included locking front and rear differentials. And the Bison adds a whole bunch of off-road accessories from a company called AEV, which is one of the leaders in off-road hardware. Now this truck is seen in white and I love the way it looks. Let's start in the front and kind of talk about what makes this vehicle special. The white against the gloss black hood bump is just a fantastic look. It gives it a very Stormtrooper, a very Star Wars like demeanor. And of course we've got the red see-through bow tie which kind of accents the front end a little bit. And um, of course it's see-through so air can pass through into the giant radiator in the front. Now, we also have a gloss black grille, which contrasts nicely against the center-mounted white crossbar. And then we can move on to the AEV gear. So let's start with this bumper. This is a beefy off-road uh, piece of equipment, which allows you to self-recover um, and recover others in a situation where you know, you're off-road, you're in the sand, you get super stuck. So first of all, these are um, metal recovery points. So you got the hole there through the center where you can put a big chunky D-ring, a big recovery hook, and potentially pull someone out in the event you get stuck. On the edges, you can see we've got integrated LED fog lights, which is pretty good. And then the big piece of kit is actually underneath this truck, enormous front metal skid plate. So you can ram it into stuff and uh, stay protected when you're out on the trail. Now the material itself too, right? Not some standard plastic, got a big beefy uh, a steel component here. And then you got the AEV license plate bracket. And this is a nice touch too, right? There's actually an incorporated step uh, with a little cutout into the front of the vehicle, which is very unique to the Bison. So if you had uh, stuff you needed to work on under the hood, you could potentially hoist your foot up there and get to um, components within the engine bay. And let's talk about that engine because it's, a little bit special. So this is the uh, 6.2 liter V8, 420 horsepower. Pop it open. There you can see, of course, it's got some equipment here specifically for the North American International Auto Show, but a potent engine. Of course, when Chevrolet launched the ZR2, a lot of folks were hoping for a supercharged model, right? Um, to compete with uh, like the Raptor on, um, uh, the, well, back then it was the upcoming Raptor R, TRX and horsepower. That didn't actually materialize. Instead, what we got is another version of the naturally aspirated 6.2. But Zach, do you want to hop on the passenger side and we'll take a full look at the interior of the ZR2 Bison. Now, first thing you notice are the seats. Chevrolet has done a great job of improving the seats on this model for um, the new refresh on the Silverado. And of course the Bison has the AEV logo built into the headrest. Now, uh, I love this kind of green stitching. We had a ZR2 as a long-term truck for a while. And this was one of my favorite features is the contrasting green stitching. It's just a little bold and a little bit out there. Now, of course, the dual screens kind of flash into life there. And we've got that uh, really cool splash screen. Um, you want to give me the phone really quick? Yes, sir. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something. Got a lot of glare on these cameras. Maybe a little, a little bit of a rub down will help there. It's kind of weird lighting here in the auto show, but yeah, dual screens, paddle shifters on this truck, leather wrapped steering wheel, push button start located down there. We got the volume control. We got dual zone automatic climate. And then of course the new shifter, which feels premium. It returns to a central detent every time you shift gear, but uh, quite easy to use. Dual cup holders and then underneath the center console here, large trays for storage. We got your wireless charger so you can prop your phone up. And then when the lid is closed, when you're out off-roading, it's got less potential to kind of go flying out. Um, the new dash layout though is so much better than the, uh, the previous model years in the Silverado. They've really, really improved it. And I like this kind of cool geometric seat pattern as well. The seats are no longer like park benches. GM has put a lot of money into that. Now let's hop into the rear of the vehicle and see um, what the back seat has to offer. 
So that cool seat design continues on this gray um, black material underneath. We've got a little bit of a cubby here and then a very flat floor if you're transporting furry friends, if you're transporting larger items you want to keep in the cabin, that's a great option. And then of course the seat backs do open up. You got some storage in there. And these fold down. Got a little bit of our armrest there as well. So suspension wise, the ZR2 comes equipped with DSSV Multimatic shocks. Kind of see those poking through there. It's a very advanced shock setup. Originally came from F1 technology and then made its way to the Colorado ZR2. And now we see it equipped on the Silverado ZR2. I like these AEV wheels. They look quite good with a little center cap um, um, and kind of this glossy finish. I do worry about what that's going to be like in a off-road situation, how they're going to hold up. And let's check out the rock rails. Curious on how they incorporated this. Now, could this be used as a step? Potentially, but it's pretty narrow and not very grippy. And these appear to be mounted to the body. So they're not mounted to the uh, frame. It's a body mounted rock rail. So um, we'll have to do some testing on that, get it nice and hung up. Now we do have the flat black fender flare. Bison logo on the side of the bed. Looks very, very good. And then in the rear, we've got AEV branding and this black applique sticker on the split tailgate. So of course you can fold down just the top portion, hauling longer items. You can do this, right? You can also fold the tailgate all together and then fold the top portion down. And now you got yourself a little bit of a step to hop on in. Quite nice there. And then bed liner, um, very thick material on this model. And I like how they incorporated the ZR2 in the back against the bulkhead. Looks really, really good. So let's go ahead and fold the tailgate up and talk about the rear end, talk about the rear bumper. Now, one thing about these ZR2s, which I've always liked, and we see it especially in the Bison, is uh, the tailpipes are kind of tucked nice and high. So I've had a lot of issues with trail bosses in the past where you've got these really nice chrome squared off tips molded into the bumper, but then you're off road, right? You hit something with your departure angle and those little bezels often get bent or scratched or torn off. Whereas on this model, right? Not really much of a flashy tailpipe design. It just kind of dumps out the bottom, but from an off road situation, that ex is exactly what you want. The spare tire, we've got a full size spare tire, which is what I want to see. Looks quite good. And then the bumper, let's see how they did the bumper here. So we got a little bit of a grippy design up here for your feet. We don't have the steps in the corners. We do have integrated parking sensors. And then once again, that trend for very hefty recovery points continues on the back portion of the rear end of this vehicle. And they really went crazy. I mean, you'd have to have a pretty beefy D-ring to even fit that setup. It's really, really quite good. So ZR2 Bison, let's see if there's a sticker on this model. Let's see if they talk about pricing. 420 horsepower, 460 foot pounds of torque. Of course, got the 10-speed automatic transmission. We have all the pricing over at tfltruck.com. If I remember right, it's like mid-70s, isn't it, Zach? It's like mid-70,000 dollar territory, but we have all of the detailed information on that over at TFL Truck. Overall, I love this color combo. I think it's a fantastic white against the black. Everywhere you look, very contrasty. I love the Bison logos. I think the bumpers are cool. And then of course, front and rear locking diffs on the ZR2 makes it pretty unstoppable off-road when you combine it with the Goodyear Wrangler tires. By the way, one of my favorite tires in the industry. Um, this has the Durawall technology as well. It's a very beefy setup. I've spent time with this in the past, uh, running it into stuff, really slamming the sidewall, and they hold up well. The Bison, the ZR2, lots of skid plates underneath. Hugely protected. I mean, look, even if you poke through the the, the fender liner here, you can see like the, the fuel tank's got this big chunky skid plate on it. So when you're out in the rocks, when you're out bashing along, you know that your truck's gonna be protected. I think it would be cool if they went a little nuts with the engine. I would love to see a supercharger on this to really compete with the TRX and now the new Raptor R. But overall, big props to uh, Chevrolet and to AEV for coming together with this really cool truck. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This has been Tommy behind the camera, Zach. We'll see you in the next episode.